Selfe Selfe'nin President of Innovation Design Society of Turkey. I would like to thank Mr. Tevfik Balcıoğlu, Professor Tevfik Balcıoğlu, accepting us and sharing his valuable information about the definition of design or redefinition of design. We would like to hear his ideas about the definition of design, how many times it's defined, we don't know, but uh, we wonder and we would like to learn more about Mr. Uh, Tevfik Balcıoğlu's presentation. Please, it's your turn, Mr. Balcıoğlu. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Serhat. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to share my ideas with you and with all world design community. Well, I don't think everybody is uh, going to watching us, but anyway. Well, uh, anyway, we have something common. We love design. Uh, I'm sure many uh, people watching uh, presentations at the World Design Assembly uh, are also fascinated with design. Therefore, we share this common pleasure. Uh, because of that, uh, because of this passion of design, I would say, I look around and try to see different use of design in life. And I come across very interesting examples. One of them is this. I'm sure uh, Turkish audience will smile immediately when they see uh, this truck and the handwritten statement behind it. Well, I try to translate it into English, although it doesn't fit perfectly well, but let's do it. It says, you cannot design happiness. Either you enjoy it or watch others enjoy it. It's a great, great, isn't it? I'm sure after seeing this uh, image, you smile. But when you smile, please be careful, because you will be entering into a different territory of design. It's called smile design. Yes, in these days, well, we design many things, and one of them is the smile. Look at this. If you have problems with your smile, with your appearance, with your face, of course, uh, there are experts uh, preparing you for a better look or for a better uh, smile, I would say. And they do it. They do it scientifically, digitally. It's being photographed, designed and prepared. So. Well, you may think that, wow, everything is going to be designed or everything is designed. Yes, but you are not the only one saying this. Many people said so. And one of them is uh, Paul Rand, an American uh, graphic designer. And there was an exhibition about uh, his work uh, in New York, and it's called Everything is Design. Well, really, is everything design? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Actually, I have uh, some, um, well, uh, suspicion about that, I would say. Yes, there are things, there are many things in which we find design. But it doesn't mean that everything is design. Well, a colorist may say, well, everything is, uh, you know, colorful without color. Well, uh, we wouldn't have a world as such. Or a material scientist may say, oh, everything is material or composed of, uh, you know, uh, cells. So it depends uh, from which discipline you come from. But uh, I think it's better to say, yes, there are elements of design in many things. Well, this is my safe interpretation. But where does it come from? Uh, it's a very bold claim, isn't it, to say everything is design? Well, actually, the idea comes from this uh, gentleman, uh, Herbert Simon. Uh, he is an economist and he received a Nobel Prize in 1978. He wrote a book. It's called The Sciences of the Artificial and published in 1968. And in this book, Herbert Simon write, writes about design. I read. Everyone designs who devises courses of action aimed at changing existing situations into preferred ones. 
everyone designs, who devises courses of action aimed at changing existing situations into preferred ones. The intellectual activity that produces material artifacts is no different fundamentally from the one that prescribes remedies for a sick patient or the one that devises a new sales plan for a company or a social welfare policy for a state. Wow, such a bold claim. It says everything, including uh, prescriptions, including a policy, everything is design. Well, if we, let's say, designers, uh, architects, uh, or, well, uh, craftsmen, uh, saying this, uh, people would probably would object immediately. Well, these architects, these designers, they are so arrogant, aren't they? They think everything is design, they would say. But no, this time, this definition comes from an economist and a Nobel Prize uh, winner, Herbert Simon. So, that silence, almost everybody in the States accepted that definition and using it in a different way. But I have some problems with this definition. I will explain you. Okay, this is the critical sentence, isn't it? Courses of action aimed at changing existing situations into preferred ones. If you do so, if you change the existing situations into the one you prefer, that's design. Right, well, I ask question, first of all, action. All kinds of action? Are we talking about all kinds of action? Or do we differentiate them? And the other critical word, the other critical word is preferred, preferred ones. Well, preferred by who? Preferred by who? I'm, I'm puzzled with this and I, I'll give you some examples now that I'm sure you will understand what I'm thinking about. Look at this, look at this scene. These are terrorist acts happened in Paris, in Istanbul, in Nice, in Ankara, in Brussels, normally in 2015, 2016, five, six years ago. And many people were killed. Now, these are actions. These are actions by terrorists, okay? And these are preferred actions by them, not by us. So that's the problem I have with this definition. And, uh, and I decided to, uh, well, rewrite the definition from my own perspectives. Well, you know, when you are experienced enough, you feel more daring. You begin to, you know, make big statements. So I said, okay, now it's time for me to, be, to make a big statement as such and define what design is. And I found a sentence, right? For me, Design is a mode of intervention into the environment. Design is a mode of intervention into the environment. There are critical words in it, like the environment, for instance, intervention, mode, and design. Let's look at them one by one. The environment. What do I mean by environment? Well, for me, everything beyond the skin is environment. Oh, you're making how come? I'll give you some examples. This one, for instance, Odile Deck. Odile Deck, uh, I'm sure many of you know, uh, is a very famous uh, French architect. She designed a uh, macro museum in Rome, 2007, amongst many others. But uh, we happened to know each other. Uh, she came to Izmir. We worked for a project together for a while. In the meantime, I did this photographs. And then I realized that actually, she was making a statement, uh, you know, with her hairstyle, with her dresses, uh, and she loves black and red, uh, as you see in her architecture as well, she uses this color, and, uh, and her appearance is uh, uh, a good sign, a good uh, reference, a good statement uh, made to the environment, right? But She's not uh, alone uh, in my experience. There are other ways of uh, contributing to the environment through design beyond the skin, like just on the skin, actually. You see, these artworks are also part of the environment. And the skin is uh, the key 
uh, territory, I think. Well, sometimes I, I think maybe not. Maybe it's further than that. At that point, I uh, remember of Orlan. Orlan uh, is a very famous uh, French uh, uh, artist. She is using her body to make her art. She takes she, uh, operations, she goes from one operation to one surgery to another, and uh, in one of them she reads uh, her poems and makes statements, but her artwork is her body. You can see how she changed from 1992 to 2004. Right, so even body here, even not only the, the skin, but maybe uh, something well uh, inside the skin, there are also elements of design. Our uh, friends, uh, uh, doctors probably will tell us more about that, but this is a, uh, this kind of internal body design that we are not uh, able to see often. Well, so let's go back to our definition. Design is a mode of intervention into the environment, and environment, I said, beyond the skin. Now, the, another critical word is intervention. Intervention. So, what kinds of intervention? There are two kinds that I, well, there are many, obviously, but for me, from my point of view, there are two. One is destructive one. Yes, uh, destructive interventions that we do into the environment. For instance, industrial waste, uh, for instance, terrorism, for instance, nuclear experience, experiments, uh, an experience, of course, in Japan, or forest fires, or sea pollution, or mining, you, you name it. So these are the destructive intervention into the nature, into the environment. The other one is constructive one. When I say so, I refer to design, city design, vessel design, architectural design, car design, or interior design, uh, product design, fashion design, uh, we can continue to count, uh, ceramic design, hair design, jewelry design, uh, engineering design, lighting design, and graphic design, well, and uh, landscape design, environmental design, glass design, and on and on and on. So these are the constructive way of intervention into the environment. Okay, but intervention cannot be done on its own. There must be some kind of means of in intervention. So, what are these means? Materials, devices, work machines, equipments, tools, and sometimes our hands. Uh, think of a craftsman, uh, uh, a pottery maker. Uh, he is using his hands to create his own design and making it, making it. So, intervention there, well, sometimes our natural uh, body. But sometimes, of course, or many times, of course, we use, uh, well, uh, sophisticated uh, appliances. So, uh, another critical uh, word is mode. Mode, what is mode? Mode, uh, in a, well, according to a uh, dictionary definition, a way and manner in which something occurs or is experienced, expressed, or done. A way and manner in which something occurs or is experienced, expressed, or done. Right. Then, uh, a way was kind of way. Immediately, it comes to my mind uh, that methods and techniques, without methods and techniques, we cannot intervene into the uh, environment properly. So, you know, these methods and techniques are derived from Science, technology, art, knowledge, skill, experience, tradition, and so on and so on. Okay. And the other critical word is the manner. The manner. Well, the manner uh, derives from our uh, cultural, social, ideological, strategical, philosophical, traditional uh, experiences, uh, aspirations sometimes. Well, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I was watching a TV, well, a few years ago, 
and I uh, seen a Japanese uh, chef, a cook, and he was uh, comparing uh, the Western uh, chefs with uh, the Japanese one. He said, the way you use knife is different than ours. When we are using knife in, in the kitchen, we are uh, uh, well, using it towards our body, but in the West, you are using it the other way around. That was interesting. I looked at uh, an examples and I found uh, on the uh, internet actually. Uh, so this is a traditional manner, a different way of using well knife, for instance, in kitchen. This is also a well a mode of intervention into the environment with a manner, traditional manner, I would say. Now, uh, this definition that I gave to you, design is a mode of intervention into the environment, is a very generic one. It's an umbrella term. So you can see how I uh, am trying to fill the gaps with uh, lots of new, uh, uh, new areas, right? So you can take this as it is, and you can develop it. That's what I'm, I'm doing it, uh, actually, sometimes by giving examples like that, a traditional manner of, of peeling uh, vegetables, for instance. Now, then, then of course, uh, the main world is design. Why do we design? Why do we design? Why do we design? Of course, we are motivated. There are some motivations. And where does it come from? Well, they come from the needs. Of course, if there is uh, no need, why would we design? Okay? Uh, and the needs are various, various. Of course, we, we all have different kinds of needs. We have first natural, physical needs, of course, to survive. And then we have personal needs, or political, social, ideological, technological, scientific, economic, artistic, etc., etc., etc. So that is uh, the entire uh, scheme, how I look into the into the realm of design, actually. It's, as I said, this is a very general expression, and it can be taken and used for separate uh, design areas. But design is uh, an umbrella term for me, covering all kinds of activities, including the uh, architecture, interior architecture, and all the others. Right, so uh, therefore, I'm convinced that uh, as an uh, well, umbrella term, design is a mode of intervention into the environment. Now, you can, obviously, as I said, uh, incorporate uh, many other concepts into it. Let's take this mode of intervention. How do we do that? Well, it could be creative, it could be innovative, it could be sustainable or environment friendly or user friendly. These are the concepts we are using today, but these are the way we inter inter uh, intervene into the environment. So you can add it up or you can, for instance, look uh, new concepts, new, new needs uh, of uh, today's world, Bitcoin, blockchain, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, metaverse. Yeah, these are new needs, aren't they? Well, whether we can justify it as a, as a natural need or not, that's another issue. Some may say that, no, we don't, we don't need them. Well, that is arguable, of course. But there are people working for these purposes. And of course, uh, they need uh, new designs. Therefore, uh, this scheme can be used uh, for different purposes to analyze and understand different version of uh, design. For instance, well, architecture. Well, we know the architects uh, love their profession. I'm an architect, by the way, uh, so I know some designers uh, don't like uh, architects, uh, but I'm an architect and I thought uh, I still teach uh, design students, no problem, of course, beyond that. But architecture, uh, also change a lot and architectural design has been used for decades so design is part of architecture of course now so how will we define architecture based on my definition right so uh, i'm saying this architecture is a mode of intervention into the environment yes because we build something we make a statement it's there but with uh, with, with with a very specific 
characteristics of architecture, which is making space. Without space, architecture, I believe, uh, does not exist. So in this particular example, uh, the famous uh, architect Kengo Kuma is not only creating a space interior, but also creating a space outside the building. Uh, the passageway is also a defined space, isn't it? It's a very good architectural piece. Ah, I liked it. Anyway, now what about interior architecture? Now, the, this is uh, Zaha Hadid's work, uh, again from Rome, uh, Maxi uh, Museum, the interior from uh, the refectory uh, or the canteen or cafe or study area altogether uh, and library, whatever you call it. It's an integrated space in that sense. And how will we define it? Well, um, I found a solution for that. Is I'm using still the same template of mine. I'm saying interior architecture is a mode of intervention into the enclosed environment. So that's important for interior architecture. It comes from the name, isn't it? Interiors, we say. Well, I'm done. That's it. Uh, we don't need to look for another uh, substantial uh, you know, definition for that. Yes, this is a famous interior design by Chancellor René McIntosh, designed in two, uh, 1901. But I understand it's uh, recently being built. Right, uh, beautiful art more piece. Okay, let's go back to industrial design. Industrial design. So what will we say about that? Look, these are all industrial design products, aren't they? But bicycles, typewriters, wheels, buckets, uh, violins, guitars, whatever you name. Yes, these are mass-produced, well, maybe not violin, actually, uh, mass-produced objects, uh, many of them. So, that's the main characteristics for me. Industrial design is a mode of intervention into the environment via mass-produced objects. That's how I use uh, this template uh, to understand different kinds of uh, design areas. And it's obviously open to elaboration, development with new concepts, but this definition provides me with a very uh, substantial uh, ground uh, on which I can build uh, many other uh, definitions which are very useful for my understanding of uh, life, environment, design, etc. Well, I think uh, that's it. Uh, that's the point I would like to uh, stop and uh, I would like to uh, thank you for your uh, attendance. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Tevik Hocam. So design is a mode of intervention into the environment via uh, mass produce products, as you are saying. This is another uh, contribution to the definition of uh, design. Uh, we thank can you. Talk and we can discuss uh, more about it. But uh, we, since we have a limited time, thank you so much. Thank you for your contribution. Hope we keep in touch and we can talk and discuss more together. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there okay. any questions? If there is, yes, we can go on. Uh, maybe it can be asked by a YouTube channel. Do we need to double check the YouTube channel? I believe that. Uh, at least Gizam can make it or I can also follow up. Well, I'm now. Uh, right. Let's see. Okay. As, as far as I see, there is no any questions. Question for the moment. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for uh, so, and I will be pleased to answer any questions they have later on. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity of expressing my ideas. And I hope uh, uh, people who are watching it will find it uh, useful, practical, and enjoyable, of course. <laughs> yes, thank you so much thank for you. your inspirational contribution, Tevik Hocam. So be sure mm -hmm. that please, we will go on and uh, keep in touch for discussion of this matter together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.